Yes, yes, one more time, I would like to welcome each of you here, and we already pray with Sister Karen. Today we study with Sister Zinaya. I remember last time we studied, it was about, do you remember Sister Zinaya? It was about Millennium. Yes. Uh, yes. I'm just going to find my notebook. Um, uh, I'll have to look for it in a minute. Okay. Uh, let's see. Last time we saw about 1,000 years in heaven. Yeah. We studied before the return of the King of Kings. That is Jesus, our Lord. This is the end of this world we are living right now. Is the return of Jesus to come to finish what Satan was doing with this planet Earth, ending the Satan reigns. He been here more than six thousand years. Jesus is coming to take his children home. We saw every step by step. When Christ return, he will be with millions of angels. They will sound the trumpets. First Thessalonians chapter 4, 13 to 17. All the dead in Christ will rise first. And those who are in Christ alive will find a new body. Together we will meet Christ on the air. And the wicked people will die when Christ come. And all those buildings will disappear. Island, we saw that. And now we're going to have all Christian and Christ. We'll meet Christ in the air. When we cut up in the air, we're going to reign with Christ for how many years, my sister? For 1,000 1, years. Uh, we were in Revelation chapter 20. When we make it to heaven for 1,000 years, there will be nobody on earth because all the wicked will be die when Christ return because Christ is a fire. So when the wicked people die, what will happen? Those people, they still were on the earth now, died, the dead body. And heaven, we saw in heaven for the 1,000 years, every Sabbath, what we will do, we will worship and bow down every Sabbath. Isaiah 66, 22 to 24. And we will see the wicked bones on the planet earth. Planet earth will be abusos. There will be nobody live when Christ returns. Like some preacher preach. When Christ return, oh, good people will go to heaven for for uh, 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 a, a long time. They don't give how many years, but wicked people will stay, and they will have seven years of tribulation. There is nowhere in the Bible say about seven years of tribulation. No Bible text say that after Christ return there will be seven years of tribulation. We were clear on that, clear on that, and we saw when we make it to heaven. We are in chapter 20 for 1,000 years of vacation with Christ. Where is the wedding between Christ and his church? Because Christ is the one that is going to marry. Now church is fiancé with Christ. But when we Christ return, the north, the wedding will be in heaven with Christ. During this 1,000 years, it's going to be 1,000 years of feast. Every day will be a new program with Christ. One of the things we know we will do, we see chance, we will sitting in chance, we will be judged with Christ. We see why those people didn't make it to heaven. We will see a lot of people that we thought that was going to be in heaven, they don't make it to heaven. So after the 1,000 years, we know also one during the 1,000 years, we saw in chapter 20, Satan was chained up for 1,000 years. Why? Is a uh, there is no body on earth for Satan to bother because now Satan bother children of God. We are his occupation. There will be no occupation, so Satan will not find no distraction. So for one thousand years, is gonna be chain circumstances chain. So there is no activity for Satan and his bad angels. So what will happen during this after the one thousand years? We already see one thousand years. How heaven will be look like? An idea we saw we will be like angels, and eh? not only will be we will be like angels. We will not be tired. There will be no more sickness, no more dying, no more uh, coronavirus, no more problems. Christ will be King of Kings, a Lord of Lord. He will be our light. There will be no more need to pay electricity. 
and we're going to see Jesus, we will see Adam, we will see Moses, we will see Shadak, Meshach, Abednego, we will see Daniel, we will see uh, 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 Elisha, we're going to meet with our grand, grand, grand parents, those parents that make it to heaven. Maybe you don't know your grand, 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 grandfather, you don't know your grand, grand, grandmother. If they make it to heaven, we're going to meet with them. It's going to be a big meeting. So like I know some places I went to preach and Haiti is it's like seven hours eight hours from the city and taking bus you know is very fine mountain those places i went to preach i told people i don't think we will never see on earth only god knows but i say we are like bell bell even you are size 40 size 36 we will meet i said you know we have one appointment, appointment in heaven with Christ Jesus. It's going to be a big meeting. We will sit with Abraham. It's going to be a big meeting. So after the 1,000 years, judgment going to start. Let's study today about judgment, final judgment. So there is no hell yet. After judgment, hell fire will take. Man is not in hell now. There is no hell now. There is nobody in paradise now. We saw three people in paradise. It was Enoch. You remember? Who else after Enoch? We saw that in chapter 5 of Genesis. Enoch, Enoch was walking with God. God took him to heaven. After who else we saw? Isaiah and Moses. We see Moses and Eli Elisha. Oh, we Elisha. saw uh, uh, in chapter 17 of Matthew, the transfiguration and the mountain. We saw Moses that came. And it's also explained in chapter 1, chapter of Jude. Moses, yes. Moses, they took his body and rise him and take him to heaven. And when Jesus died, also in Matthew 27, some people make it to heaven, those who rise when Christ died, but they don't give names. Jesus brings some of those people with him when he was going to heaven. So, but the Bible don't say when Christians die, you go straight to heaven. When you die, you sleep. And those people will rise when Christ returns. I gave you the story of Lazarus. And I explain if somebody already in heaven, why they will come back on earth when Christ return to rise from death. It's nonsense. We will study death. Uh, maybe in two weeks from now, we will study about death. Okay. We say judgment after 1,000 years now. What will happen? Let me tell you this, uh, this study today. After the 1,000 years, Christ will bring the new Jerusalem, the city, and we will be in the air and the space. And Christ now will order all the wicked people to come out from the grave. Wake up from dead. That called the second resurrection. Remember, if you are in the first resurrection, according to Revelation 20 verse 5, praise God you are in first resurrection. But if you are in second resurrection, that means no way to make it to heaven. Those people, when they rise up after the 1,000 years, immediately is going to be the judgment. The judgment will start. They will see when you was invite them to the series. They don't come. You was invite them to worship on Sabbath. They don't come. You tell them, God say, you have to keep the Ten Commandments. Not now. They don't care. They keep telling you, oh, we can do anything we want. They want to be worship God in their way. Those people, they call them rebels. They will come out from their graves. They will rise up to have the judgment. And after the judgment, Hell fire will start. A fire will come from heaven and burn those wicked people with Satan. This is what they call hell. When you see hell and Greek is Hades. Okay, Hades. And when you take it in Ibu is Sheol. So it's the same word we use for grave. So hell fire is nowhere else now. It's not somewhere in the world. No, there is no Bible text say that. Satan wants to show you when you die, you not die. That is a big lie. So this is why Satan wants to show people hellfire somewhere. That means your soul never die. That is a big lie. So next we study. When we study about deaf people, we will see what the Bible says about soul. Soul that sin can die. Okay? Ezekiel 18. No soul is going to heaven when you die. All right. So let's see who is going to judge. Huh? Everybody that is born on planet earth have to judge second Corinthians 5 10 second Corinthians 5 verse 10 we said everyone have to go to judgment but the different the christian judgment is different 
I just want to wake up like I, I, I told it to you last time. The judgment for the Christian is right now. We are about to see that. It starts since 1844. According Daniel chapter 18, verse 14, there is a judgment that starts in heaven. This judgment is for Christian because Christ will return with his reward. According chapter 22 of Revelation, verse 12, Jesus will come back with his rewards for those saved. But those who don't make it to heaven, their judgment, final judgment is for them. So let's see. 2 Corinthians 5 10. 2 Corinthians 5 10. <coughs> what we see? For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his blood, uh, uh, in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. You see? If everybody, no matter black, white, yellow, no matter Seventh-day Adventist, Baptist, no matter, everybody will go to judgment. If you do good, you will make it to heaven. Okay? But those who do good, they are judging right now. Those who do bad, they will be judged also. No matter who you are, everybody will judge. When you take the word judgment, the word judgment, that is shopat, and, and, and Hebrew and Greek is krino, and everybody go into judgment. No, no one will left behind for judgment. As long as you know good and bad, God going to judge you. So, my second question, like everybody is going to judgment. So, who is going to be Christian lawyer? Who is a lawyer as Christian? Because there is a judgment right now in heaven, and First John chapter two verse one, the Bible says we should not sin. And First John chapter two verse one, why we should not sin? Because the wages of sin is death. But in case you sin by accident, the Bible says we have a lawyer. Why we have a lawyer now? Jesus is a lawyer in heaven now, because there is a judgment going on in heaven right now for who? For the children of God. Before you die, God have to take your fall. Everything you've been doing the day you were born to the last day you are about to die. Before everybody die, your judgment, they already, God have to place your name between save or unsaved people. So now, if you confess your sin, according to 1 John chapter 1, verse 8 and 9, if you confess your sin and you say, God, Please forgive me, I still today, I do this today, forgive me in Jesus' name. Jesus will show God his hand, say, please forgive Zinaya, forgive Lydia. They ask for forgiveness, forgive Sister Gleno, because they ask, please, my blood has, you know, shed for them, forgive them. We have a lawyer as children of God. But those who do not confess, they keep doing sin, the sin is reading in the book of sin. Okay? So it's going to use for the judgment day. So we say that Jesus right now is what? Is a lawyer. Is Jesus going to be judged very soon? Let's read that in John chapter 5, 21, 23. Who is going to be the judge? Who is going to be the judge for the last judgment? Okay? Before we go to chapter 20 of Revelation, but who is going to be the judge? John yeah. chapter 5, 21, 23. Okay. Sorry, I was in that. I was in first John. No. So John chapter uh sorry, what's the chapter? Chapter 5. Who is going to be the judge for the last judgment? Who is going to be the judge? Uh-huh. For uh, John 5, 23. 21 to 23. Okay. For as the Father riseth up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. You see? That all, mm -hmm. one? That all men should honor the Son even as they honor the Father. He, he that honoreth not the Son honoreth not the Father which hath sent him. All right. So who is going to be the judge for the last judgment? Jesus. Jesus. That's why. Jesus now, let's say, 
he is your lawyer now and you don't make it to heaven he's going to be your judge do you think judgment will be easy for you if you don't make it to heaven no way why because the lawyer know everything about you let's say when you when you when somebody steal you go to judgment the lawyer say look do not lie to me if you steal it tell me did you steal it tell me the truth i will find the best way to defend you do not lie to me and the person is say yes i was hungry and you know i didn't have food for my children as I, I i took that bread and that eggs because my children were hungry the lawyer said no problem i will find a way to defend you the lawyer will bring everything he will show you know and this judgment when somebody is sick not so he's hungry that person have to eat the lawyer will show you if that person do not eat that person going to die the lawyer will show you that was that person was in need finally the need of this society push that person to do it not because that person is a bad person the lawyer will try to get and the judge finally you will find justice is that correct but yes. let's say that lawyer that's know you are still every day you keep still 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 come on it's gonna be a joke it's not every day every day let me give you one example about a guy that used to be in mexico and Mexico, this guy, they said he was a rich man and he was a drug dealer. And as a drug dealer, he have a lot of money. He shoot one person in Mexico. It's come the time there was the judgment. He got the best lawyer because he had money. This best lawyer come and show this man, you know, he was protecting himself, blah, blah, blah. And this best lawyer won the case. Even everybody see he was the mother. They have proof, but the lawyer won the case. Second time also, he killed a second person. The lawyer say, look, today I'm going to defend you, but it's the last time. Because every time I tell you, stop your thing, you don't stop. He tell the lawyer, look, I pay you, do your job. The lawyer fight again. The judge was taking two hours, three hours, five hours. This lawyer take everything he have. He went again. <laughs> but the lawyer told this guy, the mother guy, look, this is the last time because I've been warning you to stop. He said, what? I paid you. You don't have to tell me what to do because you have money. Thank you. Can always win. After five years, he killed someone again. And when he get to court, imagine who was the judge that day. That same lawyer now is become judge. When he come and <laughs> he had no lawyer, when he tried to contact this man, he cannot find this man. When he get to court, he found that lawyer he used to use before become the judge. When the lawyer, when he get there, imagine what happened. He was happy. Say this guy used to know me. This guy say, look. In the past, I used to be a lawyer. My job was to defend you to be your advocate but now my job is to Persecure. practice eh? practice the law eh? so this is my job now there is nothing i can do to you now you're going to have life you know uh prison or because you been warning you never respect the you know your words so there is nothing i can do for you i love you you are you look uh, good you used to pay me that shoe but I have to practice the law. I have to execute the law. So why I give you that testimony that happened in Mexico is because Jesus now, he knows everything about you and I. So Jesus, that is our friend now. His lawyer now soon is going to be our judge. So there is no way you're going to make it if you don't do good thing right now. So the best thing is to keep God's commandments. How God going to do his God judgment if there is no law? When you read the Bible and Romans chapter 2, Romans chapter 2, verse 12 and 13, how God do is how Jesus is going to exist this judgment. According to Romans chapter 2, verse 12 and 13, and also Ecclesias, because of time, you can write them down if you find one of them. Ecclesias chapter 12, verse 13 and 14. Jesus will use the Ten Commandments to use 
to, to, to practice his German, to, to judge everybody. Jesus will use the Ten Commandments. After the Ten Commandments, we have the package of love. Okay? Baptism is a big package, but the Ten Commandments will be there at the Judgment Day. So let's have an idea how John saw it after the 1,000 years in heaven. We are in Revelation chapter 20. Before we see who going to be judged on that day. And Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. Remember when we read verse 7 to 10. Explain us exactly when the 1,000 years finish. How can Satan and all those wicked people will come out. And they will come out to do what? To see if they can fight the great city that is in space with us and Christ and this big city, the New Jerusalem. And finally, a fire will come and burn them. That's called the lake fire. That's called hell. But let's see in judgment from verse 11, 11 to 15. Verse 11 to 15, Revelation 20, verse 11 to 15. Let me see if I can find my English Bible. If you find it, anyone yeah. can read it. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, for whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. You see? And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. You see? Lake fire will come when? Hell will come when? After the judgment. If someone tell you, oh, your mom is in hellfire now, your father is in hellfire now, you have to pay money to buy indulgences for them. Those are certain message. It's not in the Bible. Oh, your mom is in paradise now, you can speak to them. That's mm -hmm. not true. Those are lies. So those people that's come in the second resurrection, those are those, your, if your parents now, don't make it to heaven, so those people will be part in the second resurrection. Okay? Those, when they come, is going to be small, greed, everybody, rich, poor, no matter the color, after the 1,000 years. This is when the second resurrection will be on, after the 1,000 years. So after the 1,000 years, what happened? Books will open. Now, the judgment going to start for the wicked people. And everybody will see what they've been doing because there is a camera that is right now filming you. This camera is on me. It's your, on you. Everybody have a camera on us. And not only we have a camera on us, you have an angel that notes everything you're saying, everything you think, everything you do. God sees everything. It's in a book that's called Memory or Souvenir Book. Why? God needs everything because God will not accuse you. God's going to judge you according to what you did. If you do good, yes, you're going to make it. You do bad, you're going to find your reward. Okay? So let's see some idea. Those people who's going to hell, who are those people? Matthew chapter 12, 36, 37. Anything we are saying, very be careful. Some people, they say anything with their mouth. They can lie. They can, you know, curse people. They can make you sad. Sometimes you can speak to someone, you have a bad day. You have a bad week. The way they treat you with words and action. Matthew 12, 36, 37. Let's see those who are going to be in hellfire. Let's have an idea about them. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. You see? For by thy mm -hmm. words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. You see? Every thing we do, we say, this is going to use for the judgment day. That God is not going to say, oh, 
you know you did something you didn't know no everything every time we invite somebody we give them a book we tell them about god it's filming a camera heaven camera is on them that's going to use them for the judgment day if we see in Romans chapter 14 verse 10 it said about all everybody will be in that judgment okay Acts 17 31 do you think some people think oh only you know the jewish people some jewish think because they are descendant of abraham because they are israelite there will be no judgment for them no Acts 17 31 say everything you know everybody will go into the judgment act chapter 17 verse 31 because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained whereof he hath given assurance unto all men in that he hath raised him from the dead you see there is a day that fix for what for judgment it's coming very soon and malachi chapter 4 verse 1 to 3 after the judgment day planet earth going to burn brothers and sisters this planet earth i see some people some friends of my dear jehovah witness they say those buildings will stay for them nobody will burn to hellfire all those buildings will stay for them so and if you find malachi 4 1 to 3 what the bible say for behold the day cometh that shall burn as an oven and all the proud uh, ye and all that do wickedly shall be stubble and the day that cometh shall burn them up saith the lord of hosts that it shall leave them neither root nor branch but unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall and ye shall tread down the wicked for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that i shall do this saith the lord of hosts remember oh, that's 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 enough so it's okay so second peter 3 7 say the same thing this planet earth second peter chapter 3 verse 7 because of time i'm trying to go a little bit faster second peter chapter 2 verse 9 and 10 second peter verse 3 verse 7 say the same thing second peter 3 7 say this earth is reserved for fire and people tell you oh no nothing will going to burn oh god just going is a good god he's not gonna kill nobody god is not the one that's going to kill us we choose to go to hellfire with satan when we choose not to obey god this is a choice sin is a choice when you choose to do sin wages of sin is death second peter 3 7 what the bible say about that earth is reserved for what second knowing, peter 3, mm -hmm. knowing this first that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust and saying where is the promise of his coming for since the fathers fell asleep all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation for this they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition okay. of ungodly men. Okay, just verse 7, Second Peter 3 verse 7. Yes, so oh. this planet earth is reserved for what I for the choir because after men sin god cursed this planet earth at no time this planet earth been cursed this planet earth is a cursed planet because this planet earth is in rebellion against god when you see men with men woman with woman they married those are abomination those people they all go into hellfire with satan hellfire did god make hellfire for you or for me no according matthew 25 matthew 25 hellfire was made for satan not for you not for me ezekiel 28 13 and 19 said ezekiel 28 13 and 19 say hellfire was made for satan and if you are in matthew 25 also verse 41 to 45 
Matthew chapter 25 give example those who don't practice love they all going to be on like fire with Satan Matthew 25 okay. uh, 41 then shall he say also unto them on the left hand depart from me ye cursed into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels for I was an hungered hung Hungered, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in, per in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when we when saw we thee and hung hungered, or a, th a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee, then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, insomuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. All right, it's okay. So hellfire was made for who? For Satan and his bad angels. Remember in Revelation chapter 12, when there was war in heaven, and this war, chapter uh, Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 to 12, Satan and his angels fight. They fought against Michael angels and his angels. They lose this war. So they come on planet Earth. They dirty this planet Earth with this virus called sand. Now they bring coronavirus, cancer, sida. They bring all those kind of problems using wicked men to bring them on Earth. Finally, Satan going to burn in hellfire. Soon, those bad angels, that is bother you. I'm talking to them now. They are somewhere. One of them at least listen to this Bible study. Bad angels, that is bother people of God. Soon you're going to hell fire. They're going to burn okay. my brothers and sisters. We're going to be free. I cannot wait to see them go to hell fire because they've been bothered us since the day we were born. Anybody Amen. here they anybody here is free with no problem? No. You all have a problem. Who is behind those problems? Satan and his bad angels. Soon they're going to burn in hellfire. Yes, this is bad news for you, bad angels. Yes, you're going to hellfire very soon. So, if not only those people say, you know, God is a good God, yes, he's a good God, but those who choose to attach with sin, so God have to eradicate sin. God have to finish sin. So if you attach your life with sin, how you take off garbage? The best way to take off garbage is how? Is to burn it. Is that correct? We see the first time God, you know, clean planet Earth with water at no time. And God said, I will never destroy planet Earth no more with water. So the second one will be how? I will Fire. burn this planet Earth with hellfire. Okay? That will be right after the judgment day. There is no hell right now. So, 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 9, and 10. You know, and who, who is going to be in hellfire? 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 9, and 10. You see, those people that drink an alcohol, those drinkers, and they call them junkie or junkers, those people that don't respect the body of the Holy Spirit, what we see, First Corinthians chapter 6, 9, and 10. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor, I, sorry, idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, mm -hmm. nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. You see? Junkers, adulterers, those who have two or three husbands, two or three wives, those people, all of them, they're going to be in hellfire. Effeminate, men with men, women with women, okay? They call those people uh, homosexual, no matter what God created. When God created men and women, God said men will marry with a man, a woman, not men with men. So those people... They're all going to be in hellfire. Other people that will be in hellfire. What about those who are eating pork, pig, swine, shrimp? 
let's read it not say bada gems let's read it ourselves those who are going to be on hellfire let's see some of them isaiah 66 15 to 18 isaiah 66 verse 15 to 18 let's see some that's going to burn and hellfire that day Isaiah 66 15 to 18 yes it's talking about last judgment you will see those verb is in future future past yes go ahead for behold the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury uh, and re and his rebuke with flames of fire mm -hmm. for by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many they that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst eating swine's flesh and the abomination and the mouth shall be consumed together saith the Lord for I know their works and their thoughts it shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues and they shall come and see my glory all right you see those who are eating what shwai that is those who are eating pork pig those people who are eating shrimp lobster but for those who don't study that yet we will study on that but those people they are destroyed the temple of god we read it in first Corinthians chapter 3 16 17 if you are destroyed the temple of god god will destroy you to when and the lake fire and those people who are eating those things will go to lake fire. Say the Lord, not say Adventist, not say Brother James. And God, is God changed? The God that say that, is God changed? No. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6. Malachi 3 6 say God never changed. He still remains the same God. Is human being changed? No, we still the same human being. Some people say, oh, now it's New Testament, Jesus come. Jesus didn't come to die for unclean animal to become clean animal. Jesus came to save human beings. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, mankind. Not to, uh, Jesus didn't die to make unclean animals become clean. No Bible text say that. And there is no Bible text say now you can eat anything you want. As long as you pray on them. One time one of them tell me, oh, you know what, Brother James? As long as I pray on it, I can eat it. I say no problem. If it's your choice, if it's your what you belief, but that's not what my Bible tells me. I tell me, look, if you want to do that, it's okay. I'm going to buy Javel because they sell Javel. They said anything that you can buy in the market, you can pray on it and it. I said they, they sell Javel. They sell poison for rats. They sell uh, 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 nails. I'm going to boil all of those together, those poison with Javel, with nails, everything, and you pray on them and eat them. You see, you if you're not going to die, the Bible says you not you should not tempt God. So if you don't know, God will protect you. When you know something is bad, you do it. It's sin. So some people they do not understand the Bible. Two years ago, I three years ago I saw a pastor in United States. He was using the Bible and he used Mark chapter fifteen, verse sixteen and seventeen. And he said, God say, I give you power over serpent. He took a venomous serpent in his church. He was dancing, dancing, said, I'm going to show you the power of Jesus. This snake about to bite me. I'm not going to die in Jesus' name. Guess what? This snake bite him. Do you know what happened in the next five minutes? Do you know what happened? What happened? This man died. He dead. Mm -hmm. Why? He tried to tempt God. God if you don't know, he will protect you. God don't say to eat shrimp, lobster, or pig. God say, who, anyone that is in them going to lake fire, say the Lord, not say Jewish. It's for all human beings, brothers and sisters. I can go to list, list to see who, who is going to be in hellfire. And hellfire, we see Satan, his angels, those drinkers, adulterers. We see those who are eating any kind of things. Also, we see about all your works. Matthew 16, 27. Matthew 16, 27. Anything you do, your works will judge you. Anything you do, we saw that in Matthew 12, eh? Matthew chapter 16. And Romans chapter 2, 5 and 6 say the same thing. All your works, anything you do, God will bring them life in front of you. You will see anything you was doing in front of you. 
and finally you will say god you are just god will show you when he sent brother james he sent lydia he sent zinaya he sent glenn or he sent sister Karen. god will show you he was trying his best he speak to you in dreams. He send you vision. He send you people on TV. He send people a lot of ways to save them. What they do? They say no. That make me remember a man who was on the sea. Does anybody know that story? The man that was on the sea and he got a crash in the sea, but he was in something. I don't know. It was like a tire or something, but. He was in the sea, but he was praying, say, come Jesus to save me. And Jesus sent him a boat that was passing by. He don't get to the boat. Jesus sent him an helicopter. He didn't get to after this man died. When this man died, it's a story. That's not true. But this man make it to heaven. When this man uh, 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 make it to, to heaven, say, Lord, why you didn't come to save me? God say, I send you boat. I send you this, I send you this, but he was waiting for Jesus to come himself. Just a story. But why I give you that story, a lot of people, Jesus sent them everything to save them, but they don't take the opportunity. God will say, I visit you. You do not receive me. I was sick. You did not visit me. I was hungry. You did not feed me. Do good. It's in the package. Help people. Love your neighbors like you love yourself. It's a package to make it to heaven, not to go to the judgment, final judgment. Do you know we, why Satan do not love you and I? One of the things Satan do not love us is because Satan know we're going to judge him. Me, I will ask God to put... He will be the last one to be in fire, like fire, because Satan been doing too much, too much. And First Corinthians chapter 6, First Corinthians chapter 6, 2 and 3. Yes, we're going to judge those bad angels. Jude, Jude explained it also. Jude said we're going to, to judge those bad angels. And if you find it, First Corinthians 6. Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? You see? One of the reasons Satan do not love you, children of God, he knows you're going to judge them also. We will be sitting with Jesus judging those wicked angels. This is why they send problems in your ways. They will send people in your ways, people you never meet with them. I see people, I was at New York, I see people first time they see me, I don't know them. I've been driving my car nicely. They take their finger doing things to me. I said, those people, Satan is on them. Because I don't know them. They, I saw them maybe first time I was driving. They were doing all kinds of things. You know, some people, they just see you first time. They just look mad at you. Ups you don't do nothing to them. They cannot stand you because they have Satan in them. Bad angels is in them. So all those bad angels, all those people that let those bad angels use them, they will go to like fire with Satan. I can give you more Bible text, but I think it's better to finish now. But don't forget about those three books. That is very important. The Book of Life. If your name is not in the Book of Life, that means you're going to lake fire. But those three books, that is important, the Book of Life. And we find also the Book of Souvenir, Memory, Jeremiah 2, verse 22, speak about that book. Okay. And we find uh, the souvenir book in Malachi 3, verse 16. And the book of sin, book of sin is Jeremiah 2, 22. Jeremiah 2, 22 is the book of sin, the book of souvenir or memories. Anything you are doing now is written in a book. Is Malachi chapter 3, verse 16, speak about that book. So, brothers and sisters, I'm asking you, please, do not go to lake fire. Do what God asks you to do, because lake fire is not going to be nice. It's not a joke. If you think it's a joke, you can warm up your food, your, your, your stove. Warm up your stove for five seconds or ten or one, two minutes. Put your hands or your finger for a few seconds on it to see how fire is not a joke. So if you know truth, you don't practice them. The Bible says in Luke chapter 12, uh, 
more you know more you will be judged more you know more you will be judged that means satan will be the last one to you know burn and lick fire one question i always find before i get to question people always say are we going to burn forever and ever what mean burn forever and ever and they say there will be a lake fire forever is that you're going to burn forever and ever no i want you to be clear on that brothers and sisters okay if you read in jude verse 6 and 7 you will see about jonah also jonah chapter 2 verse 6 jonah say i was forever in the belly of the well when let's say i'm taking a traffic a big traffic i'm leaving chateau Gideo into montreal i can say i was forever in this traffic what mean when they say lake fire going to burn forever the action of the fire is not forever the action of the fire but the result of the fire will be forever okay if you will endure six seven is sodom and gomo are still burning no huh you can see they burn forever but still the action of the fire is not forever the action is for a time the bible don't say for how long but the result will be forever that means that person they will burn they will burn forever they will never come back in life so this is what they call but some preacher preach oh you're gonna be every day in lake fire two thousand years three thousand years five thousand years no because this earth this is where the lake fire will put on this earth that is curse will be hell fire will be on this earth after all the wicked and satan finish burn the next bible study we will see after the judgment day <coughs> on the next study we will see what will happen after the judgment remember we take them step by step jesus came the wicked people die they just transform with a new body and they just die rise up from death from their grave we meet with christ on the air we go for one thousand years after one thousand years in heaven judgment now those second resurrection for wicked people and hellfire now will come and burn the wicked people okay so after these people those wicked they burn what will happen so our next bible study will be new earth and new heaven this is on your uh, next Bible study. Do you have any question? We have five minutes, five to seven minutes. If you have questions, yeah. Um, yes, go ahead. Um, so I just have to read them. Oh, so when we're when we're praying and and asking God for forgiveness for our sins, um, like, do we have to name all of our sins? I'm asking because my husband asked me because he wants to pray with his mom. Um, because she, I, I guess she's been like a sinner her whole life and she's had like, um, substance abuse issues and stuff like that. And she's been ill for a long time, but they gave her also medication for it. And then she became addicted to that, but also abused it. Um, I don't know. He, that he, he asked me, um, for praying, like how, how, how does he, pray with her how does he help her pray like does he th does she have to name her sins or does she just ask god to forgive her just like um just say god forgive me for my sins or should she say like god forgive me for um you know i stole from that mm -hmm. person i lied to that person you yeah. know to name them yes I, I understand and god wants you to tell him your sin he already knew the sin why because let's say i have my child my son come and say dad forgive me i will say for what that's the question i will ask okay. why i will say for what maybe i i already knew but i want him i want him to take conscience of what he done was bad so i will tell him okay i forgive you but don't do it again but if you say forgive me i don't know even I know, but I God wants you to tell him your sin, not human being, not to go to a priest or to your family 
only if you sin against your family, you can confess your sin to your friend or family. If you sin, let's say you sin against me, you do something bad to me, you can confess, say, you know, Brother James, I did something I should not do, please forgive me. That is human being. But if you sin against God, I give you an example in Genesis chapter 3, when Adam and Eve, they sinned, when now night time start, they heard the voice in the Garden of Eden, and the Garden of Eden, if you read Genesis chapter 3 from verse 8 uh, to 11, they, when they heard the voice, they keep warning. They try to hide, hiding in front of God. God said, Adam, hey, where are you? Did God see them? Yes, God see them. But finally, God said, okay, anywhere they go, they heard that voice. Because you see what sin do, they cannot see God no more, they heard the voice. God said, okay. They said, God, we heard your voice, we, 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 we fear, we're scared, because we, uh, because we, we sin. God said, okay. Who told you you are naked because you are naked? Did you eat the food I told you you shall not eat? God want them to repeat it. They say, yeah. yes, yes, I did. You know, but seven pushed me to do that. Oh, my wife tell me to do that. Everybody's fine and excuse. But God wants you to say it when you do it. But not to your family, because this yeah. is between you and your God. Yeah. Okay. Yeah? Okay, that's what I suggested. Um, I just wanted to ask, but I told him to tell her to pray. It's between her and God, of course, but to confess her sins to God because she only says, God, forgive me. Um, but I suggested that she, you know, name her sins because she knows them, maybe not remembers all of them, but, you know, to yeah. confess them and to God. Well, sometimes, okay. sometimes we form memories, we cannot remember everything. Yeah. So this is why sometimes I even pray, I say, God, if there is any sin I make yeah. when I were younger, I forget, remind me, please. I say, Holy Spirit, remind me I can ask for forgiveness because I know they are waiting in a book somewhere. Yeah. When I ask for forgiveness, God forgive it, God just erase it mm -hmm. because it's still in the record book. So this is best thing to say, God, remind me if there is any sin I do not confess. The Holy Spirit will remind you every time. Okay? Let's say you don't have time like the man at the cross. You didn't have enough time. You just accept Christ. But you accept Christ with a sense your heart. Say, God, forgive all my sin. I know I'm in sin. I, it's the only thing you can say. God can forgive you because <coughs> you didn't have time to go to, you know, one by one. God okay. is the one that sees you, have sends your heart. But when you have time, like us now, we have days, we have months, we are always, when you talk to God, tell Him, remind me if there is anything, any, because nobody will make it to heaven with their sin not confess. Okay. We need to confess our sin. Because um, years ago, it's about like five years ago, she, um, she was diagnosed with COPD, um, many years ago maybe six or seven but um a few years ago the doctor because she had like respiratory like failure um she went into the hospital and they said she has one to three years to live but she's been alive for five years now and all these years i said you know it's in god's will i said they you know they're not god they don't know and she that's right she took that word and she lived with it she said well she's gonna die she she just wanted to to live and have fun and she kind of like uh, she didn't do good <laughs> i don't hmm. want to say too much because mm -hmm. i don't yeah, but yeah. you know she and i just said you know that's you have to pray and you know you don't know and she's still here now and she says to my husband um because she was uh, a bit absent as a mother and my husband when he was a child um she drank and stuff and so she says to my husband now oh, you know, I'm still here. God's giving us time to spend together because, you know, I was a bad mom and you missed me as a child. And, um, you know, I talked to my husband. I say, you know, I think it's bigger than that. You know, God's giving you your mom time here so she can, you know, repent and confess her sins, repent Amen. before she dies. Amen. So I'm really trying to help um, help her get saved and, you know. Amen. And then try to pray with her and anything yeah. you learn, you share with them and ask her to give her life to Christ. That's you right. do a prayer 
where yeah. she accept Christ for her Savior, personal Savior. And she asked Jesus to enter in her heart, so to be on control of her life. So yeah. he accepts Christ of his Savior, of her, or, you know, or, as a Savior, so that the best thing she can start from on. If, if she come out, she can make it to baptism. But the first step is to accept Christ. Yeah, mm. we did a we did a prayer um, a couple of years ago when she was in the hospital, and they said that she was going to die this time again, and she didn't die. And I told my husband, I said we have to do like a prayer. She has to accept Jesus into her heart. So, um, she yeah. uh she did a prayer and so yeah. nobody know nobody know when people will die only god yeah. has knows the day we're going to be die because yeah. i remember in 2001 i i know you heard my testimony before no you was not there uh when this first sabbath of january i was giving my testimony and 2001 doctor in new york they, oh, told, yeah. they told me it was my last year and they even told my family, I'm not going to see all the year of 2001. It's been 20 years, I'm still alive. Amen. God is the one that know when we're going to die. Yeah. No man, man can have an idea, but God is the one that know the exact time. Okay? Because yeah. our life is in God's hands. Okay? You know, when we die or breath, going back to God, that put it. So he's the one that know that day. Okay, so any other question before we pray? Um, yeah, it's, uh, um, you said in Genesis, um, I'm not sure which one it was in. Um, you said, I think in Genesis 3, 8 to 11 or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. um, which I'm not sure if I wrote it down. I don't remember what it was about now, but it was something I wanted to uh do a Bible study with my husband. Um, yeah, it's when when the person come from, it's about the western start in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve they sinned. Oh, okay, yes. And they were hiding. God want them to say it. God said, oh, did, you, "Did you eat the food I told you you shall not eat?" So God asked uh, that question because God want them to say it. So this was in Genesis. Chapter three. Mm -hmm. Okay, three, and then it was eight to eleven. Yes, if you read the story, but it's in chapter three. But okay. from verse eight, you can see they start hiding, and where God going to ask them that question? We want can go the exact verse where God asks them that question. Yeah, because okay. I want. I want my husband to have some clarity so he can help his mom understand and how to pray better and show in the Bible, say, you know, look, like God knew that they sinned, but he wanted them to confess it. And so for praying to confess and so he can, her, his mom can understand better how yeah. to pray better. Yeah, and verse 11, the Lord say, who told you you were naked? Did you eat the tree I told you not to eat? So God asked them the question because God wanted them to. This is the same thing. You see in Psalm 51, David say, God, you know, I sense against you. Because David was reading that Psalm 51 after he had a relationship with Bathsheba during adultery. So God wants us to say, to confess it to him. He doesn't have to confess it in front of people. Yeah. But sometimes you do something and pass. You feel so ashamed, so bad to say it in front of people, but God already knew it. This between you and your God. Yeah. So you say, God, I did this this year, or I don't remember the year, but please, I forget to ask you for forgiveness, please. I'm sorry I did it. Help me. I will never do it again. Help me not to do it again. Please forgive me. And, you know, God said, okay, you know it was bad, so go and don't do it no more. It's the same thing with the woman catching adultery in John chapter 8. Just say, go, but don't do it no more. Mm -hmm. Yes, before we pray, any other question before we pray? Um, I do have a question, but it might be better for next uh, Bible study because I know we're short on time. But it was about um, about about Satan and how he, how he sinned and went against God 
um, but because God created everything, including him, and he was God's right hand angel, how come he sinned and went against God in heaven? How did like how was there evil? Like how was there okay. bad? And um, Ezekiel twenty eight, and you can read Ezekiel twenty eight twelve to seventeen, and also you can read and Isaiah chapter twelve. Isaiah chapter 14 also, 14, 12 to 17 also. Those okay. two Bible texts answer that question. Okay. Ezekiel 28, yeah. Yeah. 12, 12 to 17. To 17. Yeah. Isaiah 14, 12, 12 to 17. So these angels was perfect. God created a perfect angel. When you read it in Ezekiel 28, you will see that. Finally, he was really beautiful angel. And he become proud. And not only that, he wants to take God's place. So you see in chapter 14, Isaiah say, what was his sin? His I, I, you know, I will put my throne, you know, above God's throne. I will do, I will, I, I finally. He went to war with God because he think he can fight and win and have his throne to control universe. So there is only one creator that is God. He is a creature. So you cannot fight God. He's strong, that's you, he's strong. He is powerful, that's you. But God is almightier. So God created him with the free will. God created everybody also with free will. If we choose to go to hell, it's your choice. If you choose to go to heaven, it's your choice. But God say left is hell, right is heaven. So you are the one to choose. Satan chose to uh, covet the kingdom of God, so he chose to go to hell. Is that answer to your question, Sister Zinaya? Yes, thank you very much. And I'll read those, um, those verses yeah, after. Yeah, Ezekiel 28 and Isaiah 14 explain you the sin of Satan. Okay. So you will see what was in his mind. And God warned him. He did not try to stop. He continued. And he sent. So finally he sends again God in heaven. And he brings this virus on planet earth to Eve. And Eve transferred it to us. Okay? Praise God Jesus came. We can be free from sin now. Mm -hmm. We can be free from sin. That can happen, we send by the way we think. But there are a lot of things as Christians we will never do. Praise God for that. Not because we are strong, but with the power of the Holy Spirit in us. So we choose not to do them because we are the light of this world. Yes. <clears throat> so we are about to pray, my sister. And I'm asking... Sister Gleno, to pray for us, please. I'll be right back in one minute. Sister Gleno, you can pray for us, please. Thank you. Oh, great and heavenly Father, how precious it is to know that we can be in your presence, that you call us, oh God, by your righteousness, Father. Lord, as we come to partake of your word, Father God, the word that gives it life, that gives it salvation, that gives us hope. Father, we trust, oh God, that you will Continue to enlighten our heart with your word. Give us the strength to continue in your path. Guide us with thy Holy Spirit. I ask that you will continue to be with and our family. And that you will continue to bless them as they continue to walk this spiritual pathway. That you will guide them in our truth. And um, Sister Linda, Father God, that you will let the Holy Spirit continue to function and function in our lives. And Sister Antenna, baby Sister Karen and Brother James, continue to bless us for the rest of the Sabbath. Bless our family and guide us in our truth. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, my sister. And don't forget, Amen. don't forget Jesus' love each of us here, his dream for you and for me is not to go to hell. Hell doesn't make for you, Sister Zinaya, Sister Lydia, Sister Glenel, Sister Karen, Brother James. 
so God did create us to have the everlasting life in Jesus so let's take the advantage choose life not hell may God bless each of you thank you amen thank you amen. God bless. Let me call my second study. Do I hang up now? Yes. Okay. It's Thank okay. you. Happy God Saturday. bless. Thank and you. don't forget, we are working on your baptism that is coming yes. on October 16th. Yes. Okay. All yes. right. Thank so you. We will Happy the children also. We will introduce them to God. Happy okay. Sabbath. Okay. Thank you Happy so much. Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Okay. Happy Sabbath. God bless. You have reached. <laughs> Yes, Sister Aloma is Malik home now. <clears throat> Can Malik get on board now? Do you want him to connect now? Yes, he can connect now, please. Thank you. Okay, all right. Okay. Okay. okay.